So first of all, thank you again, professor, for doing this short interview. So my first question to you, I believe is a tricky question. What is the role of mathematics in neurobiology? So I, I would say there are many roles, many functions that I can think of. And I sort of developed that uh, last week when I was speaking. And I think they, they could be defined as um, to describe, to simplify or to compress uh, a description, to explain meaning somewhat to enable us to understand at some level of understanding, which needs to be defined in some ways, and finally to predict. So um, all these different attributes are, I think, very important for a, a modeling or mathematical or theoretical approach to neuroscience. Um, it can, of course, uh, take many different forms um, that go from basically curve fitting um, to the extent that you can. So in general, for things that are simple enough that, that you have good uh, quantitative data that you can sort of uh, um, apply curve fitting or approaches without any assumption about the underlying mechanisms. And you probably know the quote, I think it was Pauli who said, uh, you know, give me three parameters and I can fit an elephant and give me four, I can fit it uh, wiggling its trunk. And which was funny and pretty good for uh, physics and uh, at the stage of, of physics, of particle physics, etc. But of course, fitting an elephant is more or less what we want to do as biologists. So um, it, it does require lots of parameters in general. And um, in that sea of parameters, we lose the, uh, the forest from, from the leaves and the trees. So it, it's, it's often problematic uh, in neuroscience. Um, there's forms that are more mechanistic. So you try and get inspiration from what you know of mechanisms and you try and, and uh, apply rules that have been uh, derived from, say, by physical approaches and so on, and, and then apply those to uh, um, uh, some kind of mathematical quantitative description. You can then, um, going up in the level of abstraction, um, come up with models. And those models are more or less inspired by knowledge and by data. So you go from things that want to take into account of every single detail, which I, in my opinion, are not terribly useful to things that are much more abstract. And then you have things that are completely abstract and that are, I don't know, derived from well-known equations, say, in, in the theory of dynamical systems. Uh, and you try and apply them to phenomena that look a bit like uh, they might be described by those uh, equations. And so, you know, it's a whole range of approaches, all of which have uh, some, you know, virtues and some, some inconvenience. So... I'd say that in, uh, in biology in general, um, my own taste and preference is to start from the data and go to abstraction. Uh, but in the history of, of, of physics, uh, certainly in the 20th century and early 20th century, it was often the opposite. You start from first principles and you go up. Um, and I, my personal experience with biology and neurobiology in particular is that it's so complicated that it's very difficult to go that way. So my second question, this will be a, a double question. Um, what can you say to us about the dynamical properties in neural systems? Could you give us a definition of the brain? I would say that the brain is a biological organ and um, living systems are, by definition, dynamical systems. Uh, we are at steady state only when we're dead. And um, therefore, a brain is the epitome of a dynamical system as a biological system that has to operate um, um, first as a, as a collection of molecules within a cell, which are always in motion. Uh, then as a developing organ from a single cell to a full um, individual, including a brain, develop, age, adapt to the environment, interact with the environment, the environment not being static itself, being dynamic, interact with other individuals very often. And the brain is the interface for that interaction. So 
I'd say that the brain is is by definition a dynamical system. Of course, it's even reinforced by the analysis of the components of the brain, going from the simplest, quite complicated molecules such as ion channels and um, neuronal membrane, biophysical components. All of these are dynamical systems to networks of neurons from the simplest one, say two reciprocally connected neurons that suddenly behave in a way which is not always predictable from the knowledge of the individuals. And then to full networks with uh, tens, hundreds, millions of neurons, which are extremely complicated objects. So, you know, all of these uh, these features define what the brain is. And I think I'd say that one of the things that's most intriguing and interesting and fascinating about the brain is that it operates over many different time scales, going from the sub millisecond to the year. So it's it's sort of many many orders of magnitude, eight nine orders of magnitude of of time that a brain is able to operate in. And for that reason, I, I, I've, I've been interested in, in a certain scale of time that uh, is uh, demonstrated by sensory systems. I've worked on olfaction and the dynamics of, of representation of odors, for example. And I now work on sleep, which is another system with incredible dynamics and uh, a nesting of dynamics. Uh, over many different time scales, again, from the millisecond to the, the hours to days. And those things are, I think, completely representative of what the brain is.